This is the Japanese 101 video, and we're starting with uh, how to create a Japanese space, how to use your dictionary effectively, and then some a little bit of practice talking about your room in Japanese. So, uh, I think I'm going to start with how to create a Japanese space and sort of what that means. Um, if you want to learn a language, it's not about going to another country or just sort of winning vocab. It's about using it with other people and feeling comfortable just using the words effectively. And you don't have to know all the grammar or all the words to use Japanese in your regular everyday life. So, like, right now I'm sitting in my, uh, my room and I'm using my POSC on my computer and uh, I'm just sort of sitting in my isu in my chair. And as you can see, that that's that was Japanese, and it's really easy, and I didn't need to use any verbs or try and conjugate anything or try and uh, use any syntax or change any of the word order. All I needed to know was a couple nouns, and I could start throwing them out. And then it starts going... Uh, it makes it a lot easier to use some verbs or change the syntax a little bit. Like, um, if you wanted to use the verb saru, which is sort of like to do, but it goes with any of the any of the words that are sort of like action nouns, like um, if you want to create a verb, there's like in English you would say, <coughs> I lost my voice there, um, I I soded you, or something, like you take a, a soda can and you smack someone in the face, and that's like, I soded you, so you would do soda suru, and then you can learn to conjugate that, and you start learning little tricks, and that's sort of what your uh, phrase book is for, is it helps you sort of understand how phrases are constructed and sentences are constructed, so you can start using the words that you sort of learn, and if you don't have a dictionary, it's a good idea to get one right now I'll put a link in the description for where you can get one or the good ones that I've found that worked for me. Um, you should have one that's both um, English to Japanese and Japanese to English and the one that I recommend below is one of those kind of dictionaries and it's for beginners and it's really good and you can actually read it. The one that I have here my dad got for me for one of my birthdays and it's uh, English to Japanese but um, it's from Japan, so all the stuff is Japanese. So if I want to look up, uh, like, the word monument, uh, I have no idea how to pronounce any of the words, because all of it is in kanji, and you can't exactly see it, but it's 90% Japanese, and even the Japanese to English is just Japanese. So you have no idea what to say, and I've been using Google Translate once in a while just to sort of write in the characters, and that's the only acceptable way to use Google Translate is you say, oh, I don't know how to read this, so I'm going to write it in, and Google will tell me what it is. But if you do things like, um, I want to know how to say lamp in Japanese, and you type in lamp into Google Translate, and it says, usually it'll say, like, rub, grandpa, or something like that. And in the dictionary here, hikari comes first, like the word for light. So instead of the word for lamp, which a lot of people will think is just like, oh, it's, it's the lamp, the lamp. And people would understand you, but it's just the more common word is hikari. Um, but then once in a while you'll come across things that are um, just the English word. Like a uh, shirt is shato, or a skirt is skato, and uh, you wouldn't know that unless you sort of saw um, a published version that's been reviewed by people who speak Japanese officially and fluently, and that was their first language. So that's sort of the advantage of having a dictionary over using, using Google Translate. People would still understand you, it's just you'd make more sense. And I don't have anything to illustrate it. Um, maybe there's 
um, an illustration with Spanish. If you have uh, someone, you're working with somebody who has, speaks Spanish, a lot of times they'll use the word um, I, I put with a lot of other things, like I, I, um, I put, put you change or something or like that. And it's because instead of give, they use the word put. So it's it's just the more common word. And if you if you're learning Spanish and you see in a dictionary that put comes before give as a, an example, then you know to use that word more frequently. So that's a good start. Then we can sort of start talking about examples of using Japanese in common everyday situations, so, um, do you know how to say paper in Japanese? Well, no, no I don't. What is it? It's like, kami, kami desu. This is a piece of paper. So then you start talking about the piece of paper, um, with whoever you explain what paper is, so you say, um, I don't know any situation where I'd need to tell someone about a piece of paper, but um, maybe you should read my kami on uh, the the effects of brain damage on dinosaurs. I don't know. I made something up. Um, or let's see. You you want to tell someone to go in your closet, so you say. Um, can you go in my oshire, my closet, and help me pick out something to wear? Pick out my fuku for today, my clothes. And they're like, what? You're, you're what? Do you, you know what closet is in Japanese? And it's like, no, what is it? Oshire, oshire desu. And then you, uh, then they sort of confirm what it is, and it's like, so can you go in my oshire and pick out my fuku for today, my clothes? And they're like, oh, okay. And then you can start using oshire and fuku for normal everyday conversation and then that considers your that considers the Japanese as your official words, sort of like how we refer to Japanese noodles as ramen, but in Japan ramen is just a general term for noodles. And then you have soba ramen and um you have the Chinese ramen and then you have um you have the spaghetti spaghetti ramen. And it's it's just noodles, and in Chinese there's a similar thing where chow mein is the term for fried noodles, but we also fry other kinds of noodles, like um, men is is the word for noodles in um, Chinese as well, and chow means fried, so you have um, chow mein, and that's fried noodles, but then it doesn't have to be the Chinese noodles, because whoever is speaking Chinese is frying the noodles, so it's always Chinese fried noodles, right? So if it was spaghetti but you fried it, then that would be chow mein, even if it's not cooked with all the same spices or whatever. Um, so you, you quite sort of start just using the words. So here's, here's some description of my room, and your assignment is to compare your room to my room. So, um, I have, uh, an oki eya, so I have a big room. There's two sections, knee, knee sections, two. And I have ni paskon, uh, ni uh, tsukue, and, um, I have no printers. I used to have a bunch of hako, a bunch of boxes sitting on my floor, and they would stack up about this high compared to me when I was standing, and those are pretty tall, pretty taka. Um, on my kabe behind me, there is a ga, and it is of, what's it called? I completely forget, it's supposed to be a restaurant from... Um, the islands, not Bahamas, the Caribbean, so maybe Bahamas, I don't know, 
Uh, but I bought it for like 150 bucks, which is pretty cool. Uh, my Tolke is over to the left, and also by um, fix it. Forget the word for bed. Over by my Shindai, and my room is pretty messy. My AI is really messy. Uh, there's Kami everywhere. There's Fuku everywhere. Um, I just got all the hone off the floor, but. Uh, it's still pretty messy, and I've got maybe two or three um, home dana for all my home, my my bookcases, and um, I think I've gone over every word on here, except for the verbs. Yeah, maybe I should kire nisuru, or maybe I should clean a little bit, make it pretty, but. That's, that's most of the stuff. I hope you, I don't know, have a good rest of your week. Maybe you should give it a shot, and I'll, hopefully you upload this by the next week. And then I can send you the next lesson. So, keep up the good work. Kanbare. Have a nice day.